Help me say, this is my Bible. Bible. The infallible word of God. A lamp unto my feet. A light unto my pathway. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can even be what it says I can be. Come on, this word was written by men inspired by God to increase my faith, to restore my joy and empower me to live in this present world. Amen. First Kings 2 and 1, and it reads, Now the days of David drew now that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be strong. Therefore, show thyself a man and keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses that thou mayest prosper in all that thou dost. And whithersoever thou turnest thyself, the Lord may continue his word which he spake concerning me, saying, If thy children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all of their soul, there shall not fail thee a man on the throne of Israel. You may be seated. Amen. Listen, we as African Americans, black folk, Negroes, Negroids, uh -huh. that, talk about us. We got some dark skin, we got some brown skin, we got some light skin, we got some sand looking uh, people, but we, I'm talking right now, excuse me, my white brothers and sisters, but I'm talking to uh, the African Americans right now. Uh huh. Uh, there's nothing wrong with articulating who you are. Amen. White folk will say white folk. Indians will say Indians. We like, well, I don't want to say nothing. I don't want to make nobody mad. Listen, and we'll say everything but the right thing. We'll call ourselves the N-word and all that kind of stuff, but you don't want to say black or African American. You don't want to say who you are, where you come from, because here's the thing. Uh, things have been, remember that the enemy is the prince and power of the air, and he puts a whole lot of misinformation where? In the air. Amen. And you'll find you have to be very careful of what you pick up in the air. Amen. You need to understand uh, uh, all, it's not all truth that's in the air. Here we are. Uh, uh, we, 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 we have to remember those stories of what happened to us. It may become painful sometimes. I know y'all some of you like, I can't watch no roots now. I can't watch no roots. I can't watch no Django or none of that kind of stuff. I like Django because he had a little get back. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> but 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 roots and stuff like that and you know they could uh what's your what's your name what's your name? Toby. No my name ain't no Toby. Kunta Kente why? Because Toby don't mean nothing, but Kunta means something. There's a meaning. There was a meaning. You cannot lose the meaning. See, when you understand who you are, where you come from, your lineage, your roots, your legacy, you will not see the, 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 the bloodline means something. And the enemy does all he can to try to erase the legacy and the lineage of the bloodline. Why is that, Pastor? Because in the bloodline, what happens in the future, you are, uh, there becomes an heir to the throne. Amen? Let me say the bloodline. So when you begin, your, 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 your history may be painful, Oh, so painful it may be. Oh my God, I can't, I can't stand to think about it. I can't stand to watch it. But you need to watch it. You need to watch it. Let your grandchildren 
watch it. Uh, uh, you, when you, you, it's something in your legacy. You, in the middle of your legacy, there have been some ups and there have been some downs. But if you keep on looking, there's some power in the bloodline. My brothers and sisters, we must always remember the stories, the sentences, the atrocities, and the victorious testimonies which remind us of all the enemy did to attempt to break our wills. So this is that David who, after being held back, talked and teased David that turned the page of his autobiography. Can you see it? He killed Goliath with a slingshot when he was a boy. First forward, we fast forward now. David finds himself old and facing certain death because of old age. We're going to get up out of here one day. You're going to find yourself. You're going to wake up. You're going to bat your eye. You're going to turn the page and you're going to be looking at the last chapter. You will be. So here's the thing. You got to understand that comes a time, there's a tipping point, there should be a pivot in your life where you straighten up and become, I once was a, a, a child, but now I'm old. It, it's some things you need to put away, childish things. Amen, you ever seen an eternal teenager? They can be 50, 60, 70, 80 years old. They, they never mature in their mind. They still trying to wear throwback jerseys. You can't hold back time. Amen. You have to embrace time and turn, turn the page. Don't be afraid to turn the page. He was a boy. Here we are. And as any leader, leader of kingdoms, leader of households, leaders of businesses, we find this David getting his affairs in order because transition is Imminent. Be strong. Turn the page. What is this strength, Pastor? I hear you. Thank you. Strength is defined as the capacity that you possess to withstand great force. The more word, the more capacity. The more worship, the more capacity. The more prayer, more capacity you will gain to withstand, here comes, the pressures of life. See, when you're in your chapter, when you're in your present, when you have lived through your past chapters, you have to begin to appreciate what God has allowed. You got to appreciate it. You got to appreciate if you live in the pot belly stove. Like when I went to school, the kids used to have to go to the back of the school. Every classroom had a, a coal bucket. Y'all don't know what a coal bucket is, but we burn coal. Every kid, when you, when you got off the bus, you had to, some, some of the boys, they had to get the coal bucket and go into the back uh, pile. The county would drop that pile out digging at it. You go out there and get the little coal and put it in and start the fire for your classroom, not the school. Every classroom had a coal bucket. Every classroom had a pot belly stove. Amen? In other words, every family has some things that they've had to go through that they would not ever want to go through again. But you need to learn to thank God for it. I thank God for the coal pile. We used to play in the coal pile. We used to say, oh yeah, 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 you can have fun in the coal pile. You can have fun in those things that, that when you look back on your life, you're like, Lord, I don't want to ever do that again, but I thank you for the past chapters because it's part of a bestseller. Oh my God, y'all better leave me. Him and say, be strong. Turn the page. The father, the predecessor, the head of household must give instructions to the heirs, the next generation, the ones found in the upcoming chapters of life regarding this big word, inheritance. Our children are, I believe, acting up a lot because they are, they are fearful of what comes next. They are fearful of the new chapter that's coming. They are fearful of turning the page because they know that something is missing. Is your, is your chapter blank right now? 
your page is you, 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 you using size 15, 16 font just to make space? Are you double space in your pages? Or are you living in single space pages? Are you trying to fill those pages? Or are you just trying to get through the chapter? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so here you come. Remember this. Most of the time, whenever there is a promise of transference of power, you will find naysayers. You will find bullies. You will find contenders vying to take away and steal that which should be yours. Hmm. Folk are always talking about you. Don't you know people don't talk about folk that's not doing nothing? Hey, somebody said, man, folks be talking about you, talking about, listen, if they ain't talking about you, get scared. You need to start going from double space to single space. You need to find yourself trying to populate your chapter. People don't talk about people that's just trying to get through to the next chapter. People don't talk about people that's just trying to get to be finishing the book. It's not for you to get upset when you hear somebody talking about you. What you want to do is make sure they spell it right and pronounce it right. Amen. It's bad to have somebody talking about you calling somebody else's name. Give me the credit. Run the credits. Run the credits. This is my story. I was looking at Tyler Perry or something. He said, executive producer, Tyler Perry. Director, Tyler Perry. Written by, Tyler Perry. Acted, Tyler Perry got four or five different roles in one movie. This you. You're the executive director. You're the producer. And you're the writer. And you are the actor. You are the actress. You are the principal. Him say, this is my story. So here it is, King David. Son of Solomon was young, between 19 and 20 at the time. Listen, even though David had other sons, God had given David the approval to pass the throne of Israel to Solomon. Even at the time, some would, get, would have agreed that Solomon may have lacked capacity to take over the weighty position. Listen, that his father would give him as king, even though that he had the favor from God. God's favor is the great equalizer. You got to know if you're breathing, if you're living, you are living and breathing because of the favor. Let me say, God favored me. He favors you. He favors you. It's not that he looks like you, but he's thinking about you. It's not that you are identical twins or anything, but God has stacked the deck. He's given you what you need to turn the page. To be an heir almost through, to be an heir to a throne, to be the next coming from any family is a blessing, but everyone will not be excited about who has next. Him say, I got next. Now, don't you know everybody always want next? Everybody always want next. But the thing is, here's the thing. Nobody can have your next. Nobody can have your next chapter. Nobody can star in your, uh, your book, in your chapters. Him say, I got next. Uh-huh, he says, so King David says in verse two of the text, new air, be strong in the Lord. Know that there is a capacity waiting for you in the next chapter of your life. He says, so be strong. Don't, don't, and, and, and the thing about being strong, let me, let's talk about being strong. And to, to be strong, there are some components, there are some characteristics of being strong. Okay, hear me say be strong. You know, you're like be, be quiet. Listen, if the pain is hitting you, it's kind of hard to just be quiet. 
You know, if you have, have, have had some challenges that you've gone through, carrying all that, it's hard to just be strong. You know, I might become strong. I, I might become better. But, but just to be that, it, it takes more than that. Amen. And the Lord understands that we should grow daily in him. Amen. So here it is. First thing I want to raise to you for your consideration to accomplish uh, this, you must first be devoted to God. Help me say be strong. You got to be first devoted to God. Put that in the chat. What do you mean? There are some pieces of being devoted. Just to be de devoted, loyal, loving, and learning. Help me say devoted. Devoted, hear me say, loyal, loyal. Loving, loving, and learning. Now, these are components of devotion. Loyal, devoted to God, loving, uh, uh, loving to God's people, and willing to learn the lessons. Hear me say, be strong. be strong. Turn the page. David is telling the heir of, of the future, Solomon, you may be young, but that can't be your excuse. This may be a new position, but you forget your juvenile mindset. You can't, can't bring that in to the future. Forget the old ways. Forget the old fears. After you turn the page into your promise, you must forget the past failures. Amen? Amen? You got to forget the past failures. If you plan on turning the page in your life, if you plan on going higher in your life, you're going to have to turn the page of what happened because here's the thing. If you say, well, Pastor, how do I, how do I turn the page? How do I forget those things? It, hurt, it hurted me. I was hurt. They did this to me. It hurted me. I, I went through this, uh, and, and it hurted me, Verna. I can't even write it down. I can't even describe how much it hurt, the pain in the past. But here's the thing. If you are willing to give it to the Lord, yeah. ah, let me say, give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. I'm talking about give it, take, bring it all to the altar and say, Lord, I'm giving it to you because I got to go higher. I'm giving it to you because I got to go further. I'm giving it to you because I can't have this pain becoming a stumbling block. Young man, young woman become mature. I didn't say be mature, did I? Become mature. It's a process. Middle-aged person become mature. Senior citizen become mature. It says, become mature. I need you to pray until God expands your capacity to handle what comes next. That's why you want to be mature because God has a blessing with your name on it. He has something else for you to do and it's coming next. It's in your next chapter. Apostle Paul tells us in Romans 12 that you must, here comes, present your body. Present your talents. Present your will to God and they all must be holy. God needs you to be present. God needs a holy uh, body. He needs a holy talent. He needs a holy will. When you turn the page into new chapters, my God, new dimensions, new plateaus of your life, you cannot, here comes, act out like the familiar story that you know. Let me say, turn the page. Cannot act like what's familiar. Remember your history? Yes, Pastor. You were denied time to read the rule books of the game? Yes, that's cool. But, but you are in a new chapter now. Focus on the new opportunities which God has for you. What do you mean? To be mature, to be strong, you must be able to use divine logic. Example of divine logic. When they smack you, what you got to do? Now, that's divine logic, ain't it? That's showing up divine, right? That's not physical. Because when somebody, when you when you in your flesh, you say, somebody slap me, what I'm going to do? 
You, 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 you start figuring out how many ways to hurt somebody. You, you start pulling back, uh, uh, sheltering all of them moves and everything and them tactic, techniques and tactics. Say 20, 20 ways to put a person down. You got to pray, die daily. You know, turn the page. You, you, you need to turn that page on a daily basis. Lord, get, thank God for brand new mercies. Because this one, this, this page I'm on now, I got to double space it. Because I just, certain things I can't say. What I would do good, evil, is always present. To be mature, that divine logic, meaning you must become, here comes y'all ready, three things, reasonable, rational, and relational. Reasonable, come on, let's say it. Let's, let's be reasonable. Come on, come on, come on. Let's be rational. I'm not going to react, I'm going to respond. And, and let's become relational. It, it's, it's better to try to make a person your friend than, than to have them as an enemy. You need all the help you can get in life. Because I promise you, I promise you, you keep living, you're going to run up on them again. Amen. You don't meet people just to meet them. In, in, in the formula of God's favor, God sets up situations. He's setting you up for a win on the back end. He's setting you up for a win at the end of your story. He's setting you up for a win in the next chapters. So you don't just meet people to meet them. Let me say turn the page. Reasonable, rational, relational. Reasonable in your thinking, rational in your responses, and relational with your worship of the Lord. In verse 3 of the text, David tells this young heir why he is, needs to be strong and why it's important and most necessary for the pages to be turned. King David here in verse 3, as you look at it, he said, and keep charge, keep watch of the Lord thy God. Walk in his ways, keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies. So the first thing, beloved, you got to be devoted to prayer. The second thing, you got to become dedicated to the production of the work. Strength requires dedication, right? Be strong. When you are dedicated, people can't see what you're working for. When you're dedicated, you may be going to school, you may be going to college, you may be working out, you may become a vegan, a pescatarian, a, 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 what's the other ones, and all them, a meat eater, I'm a lion. Whatever it is, you need to be doing it because you have a goal in mind. Amen? You praying every day. Why are you praying every day? Because you don't have nothing to do at that time? Or are you doing it because you have a goal in in mind. Let me say be strong. In the next text, King David, prepare Solomon of some things that you will find in your new chapters of your life. Ooh, thank God. Son, after my death, this is a conversation. Isn't that something? That's grown folk talk right there. When, when people try to prepare you for when they are not there. Amen. The training. That's, that's what it is. He says, son, after my death, don't be confused. Don't be disoriented because as a leader, you should follow only one person. Brother, you leading the family, you should follow only one person. Sister, you leading the family, you head a household, you should follow only one person. Who's that person? Well, I gotta call my pastor and see, man, that ain't the person. That is not the person. Let me say, you are not the boss of me. Come on, y'all. Everybody say, you're not the boss of me. See, once you become mature, you got to understand God is your boss. Amen. Jesus is your teacher and the Holy Ghost is your company keeper. Amen. 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 Don't be confused and disoriented. Here's the thing. Dedicate your ways to his ways. Follow his statutes. Who? His commandments. Who? His judgments. And dedicate yourself to his testimony. In other words, young heir, you are all in here. You are young heirs. As you turn the page into a more prosperous possibility of life, as you elevate, you must depend only 
on the Lord. Amen? How do I depend on him? You need to know what he said. Read your Bible, study your word, uh, develop a prayer life so you can know him and you will begin to know his voice. My sheep hear my voice and a stranger, it will not. You know how you teach your little children and grandchildren, stranger danger. When the enemy comes, do you, does your spirit jump up and say, oh, that strange fruit right there. Amen. Amen. So here we go. David is saying to his son in transition, Solomon, become devoted to God. Solomon, become dedicated to God's work. And as king, God has given me the authority to make a powerful declaration. What's that, Pastor? That's why. Y'all remember Mufasa? See, I should have had my little line thing. I should have a little like you, you know, Mufasa. Mufasa was full of questions, wasn't he? Well, why come we can't go over there? My daddy is the king. Amen. And, and, and so you got to understand when they began, when Simba began to dedicate Mufasa, he was the baby, but he was dedicating him. Amen. So you got to understand that there's one thing, God can do certain things, but there's one thing that he will not do. And that is, he will give you favor and all of that, but he will not make you follow him. He will not make us obey him. And he will not make you walk in the statutes of his word. So here it is. David said, that's something I got to do. I got to, I got to pronounce it over you. So here it comes. So he says, for you to be strong, I must receive the declaration from God. So a declaration is an argument of a fact. Declaration is something that even the king doesn't have the power to bring to pass, but the king must authorize, be authorized by God to pronounce a word. Fathers, you have, if you know the Lord, you have been authorized by God to speak over your children. Mothers, you have been authorized by God. Head of house, you have been authorized by God to speak blessings over your children. Amen. They waiting for it. They wait. They don't even know what they're waiting for. But when they hear it, they'll know it. Amen. They will never forget it. What, what, what they parents, they, they won't forget the good and they sure won't forget the bad. You ain't nothing like your bow leg daddy. They ain't gonna ever forget that. And just like they won't forget that, they will never forget when you pronounce something over them special. Him and say, decree it and declare it. So here's the thing. I'm all here. It is at the end. To receive the Lord's authorization here, King David is saying to Solomon, decree and declare. Decree means to cut down. Decree means I'm, I'm, I'm going to help all I can. David couldn't build the temple, but he had the money. David was a, a, a king, a man of war. He had blood on his hands, even though he was a man after God's own heart. So it was certain things that he couldn't do. So as we play this, this book, as we play this movie, as we play this library, you have been charged by God to do certain things in this season. Everything, 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 what your mama went through, your daddy went through, your great granddad, what Kunta Kente, what the, uh, 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 the Amistad people, all of that, you have, right now, you have been charged by God to do something. And it's special. People have been praying for you. Hear me say, it's special. People have been sacrificing for you for this time. 
people have been hung for you for this time. Let me say this time. God has given me the power to declare, uh, David says, a thing which means to build up. And by faith, Solomon, I've already seen the victory. You got some family members that are gone, but they've already seen your next chapter. You got some family members that have passed on, but they have sacrificed just for you. There are certain things that the, that the fathers and the mothers, it, they didn't obtain it, but they saw it. But through you, they did obtain it. Isn't that something? So you got to have strength to turn the page. So be strong. Turn the page because the hindrances you see in the present have all ready been cut down when you turn the page don't be afraid to turn that page be, be strong because the tricks and the traps that the enemy has set for you in the past let me say already have already been destroyed when you turn the page be strong your old ways and your old fears by faith will be no more when you turn the page let me say be strong be strong, turn the page, and declare victory over your life. Heaven said, be strong. Be strong and turn the page that you are the head and not the tail. Heaven said, be strong. Be strong and turn the page because you are healed by the wounds in my Savior's side. Hallelujah. You need to declare that you are a victor and not a victim. Amen. Him say, I declare. Come on, one more time. Him say, I declare. Come on, clap those hands. Him say, I declare. Amen. Everybody stand. Hallelujah. Be strong. Turn the page. Look at somebody. I need you to go to about three people today. This is a message of encouragement. And, and don't just go to somebody because they're conveniently behind you, next to you. But, but allow the Lord to move you because somebody needs some encouragement right now. Go to about three people. Go about, I'm talking to everybody. Go to about three people and just begin to encourage them. Say, be strong. And God has something on your next chapter, your next page. Go ahead right now. Go on, come on. And encourage them now. Come on, come on, come on. Tell them, be strong. Turn to pray. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Come on. Speak those words of encouragement. Speak those words of, of, of healing. Speak those words of, of, of admiration. Speak those words of faith. Hallelujah. Put it in the chat and be strong. Hallelujah. God has something great for you. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, clap those hands. Come on, clap those. Come on, testify to them. Be strong. That's it. Tell them, come on, come on, mean what you say. We thank God. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, clap those hands. We are a family church with a global vision. Holy Nation Church of Memphis. We thank God for you. Those of you in our virtual platform, continue to pray for us as we pray for you. And as we get ready to go, I just want to say this. Everything, and I mean everything, is going to be thank God for that word. We thank God for that wonderful word that he sent to us on today. I want to also invite you to our Empowering You for Life Bible Study. Uh, every week our pastor is teaching on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. on our Holy Nation YouTube channel. And we would like for you to come and be a part of our Bible study. You can also join us Monday through Friday for our prayer conference call uh, on, on Monday through Friday. Uh, that information should be at the bottom of the screen. You are welcome to join us. I want to thank you for your stewardship as well to Holy Nation Church of Memphis. We thank God for you. As you know, we have several means of giving uh, to Holy Nation Ministries. Uh, all of that information is at the bottom of the screen. Um, you're welcome to do that. You can even come by the church and drop it off or you are welcome to mail it in if that's your means of getting it in to us we will be so glad to receive it at that time thank you again for your stewardship well until next time we just want to say that we love you with the love of the lord thank you for joining us uh, on holy nation youtube channel we we love to have you you're welcome here at any time and until next time god bless and walk in favor